Oh, hello. How are you? My name's Gary. I live on the island of Kauai. And I decided to build a talk show in my basement. Let's go see. Yes. Yes. Thank you all so much. I'm so excited I can't stop clapping. Thank you all so much for joining us on the uh, only the second ever uh, episode of Animal Talking, the world's first late night talk show that exists entirely inside the world of Animal Crossing. Don't, don't you just love that intro? Isn't that intro just fantastic? <laughs> I agree. I agree. I really, I really, you know what? I love it. I, I, I hate to do it to you. I hate to do it to you all, but I love it so much. I'm going to, we're going to do it one more time. My goodness. Look, at I'm jumping for joy. I'm so excited. First of all, thank you to uh, my uh, band leader, um, Adam Nickerson over there. How's it going? Ah, no complaints. I'm very happy with my drum set this evening. Now, Adam is not only the band leader, he's also the uh, video editor of the show and actually is responsible. Uh, if you saw the YouTube uh, version of last night's show that went out today, Adam cut that together. He also cut together some little promos and trailers. Uh, and he also was really helpful in uh, all the transitions. He did the animated logo that you just saw. Uh, he did some end titles that are going to play at the end of the show. He has really been the, uh, the MVP of animal talking right now so uh adam thank you thank you thank you are you saying all this just so if something goes wrong you can blame me yes that too that too so yeah um yesterday was the the debut uh episode of uh animal talking uh an idea that i came up with about 36 hours ago and and very very quickly was able to throw together this set and again i can't stress this enough with the help of so many people uh who contributed uh donated uh the necessary items that we need you know to, to make a talk so show set you really need like very specific items so many people came through adam my wife leah uh price 412 um without without them we wouldn't have the drum kit we wouldn't have that amazing uh skyline wallpaper uh we wouldn't have half of this stuff it wouldn't look anywhere near as good um, as it does. Uh, I also want to thank, um, uh, in advance, Kenny Fong, uh, who, um, is the guy who posted that amazing, uh, opening theme music, uh, that you heard, uh, on YouTube. It seems like it was like part of a school project or something that he did way back in 2014. He posted it to YouTube years and years ago. I'll put my hands up right now. I, the, the music that you heard is just what I believe and assume to be just kind of royalty-free, copyright-free music from YouTube. But with Adam's help, I did find Kenny Fong's email, and I sent him an email yesterday saying, hey, I did you know, I did a pilot episode of this thing. Um, I'd love to continue using this music. Uh, are you the owner of it? Would you, uh, you know, is there some way I can license it from you or compensate you for it or whatever? Uh, and I hope to hear back uh, from, uh, from Kenny soon. Uh, but in the meantime, Kenny and everyone else who performed on that amazing theme tune are credited at the back end of the show. Yeah, we threw this together very quickly, very, very quickly indeed. And, uh, with the help of, of, a, of a bunch of people, uh, not least of which know me, Kyle, our first, uh, guest just yesterday. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yes, absolutely. 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 All right. That's enough of that. Yes. Thank you, Nomi, for being our first guest. I mean, obviously this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, do you want to come on and basically be on a cartoon uh, talk show? Uh, but she did it. You know, she's a good friend of mine and she was happy to help out uh, with, uh, you know, kind of being the first guinea pig on the couch. Um, the, the response, 
Adam, how, how, how would you describe the response to, to the first episode so far, like 24 hours later? Um, because I don't know much about Twitter. I actually had to turn off my phone for most of the day because my phone would not shut up. Your phone blew up because this thing is blowing up, my friend. Oh, yeah. It was, it was unbearable. I happen to know for a fact, and this is true, I won't name any names, but I happen to know for a fact that a very prominent TV producer emailed the link to yesterday's show, the YouTube link, to a number of senior TV executives uh, with simply the words, you're too late. I know, right? I, isn't that, I mean, that is, that's absolutely just, just amazing. Um, I want to stand a little bit back here so I don't keep trying to turn that light on and off. There we go. This is a little bit better. Maybe this is the future of television and maybe this is uh, the next iPhone. I don't know. What, what, I don't know what this is, but I feel like it's, the, it's, it's, not, it's not the end of something. It's the beginning of something. I'm actually going to wander over here over to my little monologue spot. This is actually where I should be standing, I think. This is where I stand and I'm supposed to be. This is going to be where I do uh, my monologue. Um, and I haven't really done one yet. Like, I, you know, I, I don't, again, we haven't prepared, prepared very much. This is all very much by the seat of the pants. So I don't have like a, like a three minute, hey, do you see in the news today? Da, da, da. Like, I don't have that. Um, th th that will be coming though. And we're going to have, I've already got big plans. There will be opening monologues. There will be musical guests. There will be stand up comedy. There will be celebrity interviews. Uh, we're going to do it all. You might ask the question, how can you host a talk show? Without, ca without cameras. Well, here they are. We've got these incredible uh, production um, uh, TV cameras that go along with our beautiful lights. Uh, and we even have uh, two really cool different uh, lighting schemes uh, here on the set. This is how this is just like the regular late night talk show. But we're also going to be getting into a little bit of animal talking after dark. Yes, this is going to be where we get intimate. This is going to be where we... This makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I need to talk to HR. <laughs> And it's and I don't know yet exactly what that means, or who's going to be willing to come on this show, but uh, but we're going to give it a try. There's going to be I'm already like one episode in, and I'm already launching like you know Law and Order SVU. We've got Animal Talking. That's already an established brand. It's been around for at least 24 hours. It's you know everyone knows what it is. Uh, so it's time to it's time to branch out with uh, with uh, uh, Animal Talking After Dark, where you know we're going to be getting uh, steamy. That might be a good word for it. There's going to be a lot of sexual tension, Adam. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to feel sexy and you're going to feel tense. That's all it really deserved. Let's go back to the regular lights. So that's Animal Crossing After Dark, and that's something that we'll be working on. So what we're going to do tonight is really just kind of like a fun thing. We're going to have the, the people that we're going to have on the show tonight are not famous at all. Uh, but maybe they should be because they're really uh, wonderful, uh, great people. And so um, if our green room strategy has been working uh, correctly, let's go, let me just uh, pop behind the, uh, pop behind the desk here. Um, if our, <laughs> if our, if our green room strategy has been working uh, correctly, our first guest, uh, our first non-celebrity guest uh, is at the top of the stairs right now and uh, able to uh, join us. So please welcome. Please welcome my favorite person in the whole world. And I'm not, no, no exaggerating. My favorite person. Get back down. Where you? Get, get back up the stairs. My goodness. <laughs> Please welcome my most favorite person in the world. My wife, Leah Witter. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me at Hello. such short notice. Now, Leah is not only uh, my wife, she's also the executive producer of this show. And she's the one who designed that amazing Animal Talking logo that you see up in the top corner there. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you this also, she's also very, very shy. And so it's a bit, it's it's not a bit, it's not a small thing for her to come on the show and be a part of this and broadcast in front of all you people. So uh, let's give let's give her a round of applause for that as well. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, Leah, thank you, thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, 
What do you, what do you, what do you think of this whole crazy experiment? So, I mean, you've been a big part of it. You haven't just been sitting here watching. You've you've contributed items. You've uh, you designed that logo. Uh, you've done a whole a whole bunch of stuff. Like, what do, what do you what do you think of all this? I really checked in with you. Like, is like, <laughs> do you feel like you made a terrible mistake? Uh, uh, marrying me or, or what no no these are this is actually the sort of thing that makes me glad that i married you because i can think of so many people where if, if one of us had this idea they would just roll their eyes you know but we go all in on the stupid and the ridiculous and that's one of the things that i love about you oh that's really sweet now speaking of the miracle of technology leah and i adam leah and i actually met <laughs> Leah and I actually met on the internet, didn't we? On Craigslist, which they, which you can't meet people on anymore because too many people were getting murdered. <laughs> I just did the wrong reaction to that. <laughs> uh, let's try that again. That's there what I'm, go. that, actually, I got it right. I got that way. See, Adam, I'm not the only one that makes mistakes. Ah, uh, you're right. Yeah, we did. We met on, on, on Craigslist. Craigslist. On Craigslist. I, um... I responded to your personal ad. Yeah, and it was a and it was a whirlwind uh, romance, wasn't it? I was lonely, and I posted a personal ad on Craigslist, and she responded to it. I did. I mean, I kind of feel like the stigma of all that has has gone away now. Like you know, when it used to be like online dating and stuff, people would be like, "Ooh, really? That's kind of like for losers." But like everyone does it now. And I've I was never good at like meeting people in bars or anything like that. I always sucked at that kind of stuff. I I actually have the ad saved. But no, I will, never, no. I will never share it. Don't even, and don't ever even, don't ever even show it to me. I, I, I don't want to see it. I won't. I, I, I don't. I, I don't even like knowing that you have it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's there. This is going to be my face now for the rest of the, the show, knowing that you have it. So yeah, we've been married for how many years now? We've been together for like fifteen years. How many years have we have we been married? Uh, we've been married for seven. It's right. easy to remember because it's always. As as long as our kid has been alive, yeah, yeah, because we kind of did it. He was what, we six months old. We kind of did it all backwards. We had we had our kid before um, we were married. Like she's actually in our wedding photos. She is. She was a cute little chubby dumpling in those photos. And I like that. Uh, I like that we had a very low key wedding as well. That because like you're not one of you're not like a bridezilla or anything. So we just got married at City Hall, and our wedding reception was literally like at a pastrami sandwich. Uh, hole, hole in the wall place across the street like and we, like, we were sitting there after our, having just gotten married with like a bunch of construction workers that were on their lunch break it was great we went down to the parking garage underneath city hall and i changed out of my dress beside the car in the parking garage and then we walked over and had sandwiches and went home it's, it's actually one of the reasons why leah and i are a good match is because like i'm terrible at you know the romantic stuff and like she's not someone who think like needs like a big fuss made of her on valentine's day like she's happy just to kind of get a get a cake and like uh, sit on the couch and watch tv oh yeah absolutely adam you've got a a, a lady in your life don't you yes i do tell us tell us she's, about her uh, uh her name is brie and she is currently in the next room playing animal crossing as well oh nice so she's not watching this she's just doing her own thing i don't actually know if she's watching this and uh, <laughs> i i don't know what do you think about watching all this what, 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 what does she think about all this uh, she thinks it's hilarious. Okay, she thinks good. you are hilarious, and Aww. she thinks it's funny how you s constantly screw up the exact same buttons on the Nintendo <laughs> Switch and then go from zero to furious and just scream until your uh, mic tops out. That's yes, that's what I do. That's what I do. Uh, for those who may not be familiar, who might be uh, here for the first time, I uh, I am an Animal Crossing streamer, uh, and I usually uh, host a stream called Animal Crossing Mornings with Gary, and that's on this channel. Uh, 9 a.m. every day of the week, seven days a week. We haven't missed a single day uh, yet, and uh, we intend to keep going because it's been really, really fun. Uh, but look, honestly, honestly, if it was nothing, honestly, if it was, uh, you know, you, there was, you couldn't get a penny off of this uh, website, um, I still uh, would do this because uh, I really enjoy it. What? You all right over there, Leah? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay all right I'm very just, good um i saw know. a sneeze I, yeah i'm doing a little sneezing making me a little uncomfortable uh, yeah, I, I, yeah <laughs> like, are, we, are we are we practicing social distancing here i'm not too happy about this i i, I should have worn my uh, my mask no I, i'm just i'm trying to entertain myself with emotes so that my or reaction so my switch doesn't go to sleep and kick everybody out oh so you're just like forcing yourself to sneeze every now and again <laughs> 
Yeah. You can do that exactly. just by you can do that just by wiggling your camera view around though, and you don't have I to know, bother us. I know, but sneezes are adorable. And it's yeah, but not crossing. not when they step on my lines. You're messing with my comedy. Whatever. Whatever. I'm waiting for your comedy. I just got yeeted right off the set by that. That was horrible. Look, my character's unhappy now. He's not ha he's not happy about this at all. Aww. Yeah, I, you know, it's weird. I've never the the idea of interviewing you is a we is kind of a weird thing, isn't it? Like like to think it's it is. Yeah, I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask the chat to ask if there are any questions that they would like to ask about me and Leah, like as a couple or whatever. Um, let me know. Uh, Zabe says, uh, Leah, I'm gonna let you take this one. How did you propose? I guess. Um, go ahead. He didn't, as Gary mentioned uh, before. We kind of did things backwards. Um, we had a very surprising surprise baby. Uh, so when I was, let's see, I think I was about six months pregnant because I wasn't pregnant enough that I couldn't fit in the booth yet. Uh, we were out to breakfast and we had a very romantic conversation where I said, hey, since I'm pregnant, maybe we should talk about getting married sometime. And Gary said, sure, why don't we do it in December when we're with your family? And I said, let's wait until February so that I can claim this kid on my taxes and get more money back. And he said, okay. And now we're married. Yeah, it was very, very pragmatic. I, like I said, I, I'm not, I always <laughs> said I'm not very good at the romantic stuff. Hagfish77 asks, who's the cook? And I would say that we kind of both are, but we just do, we, we just like to cook different things. Leah's more of a baker. Uh, she likes to bake. Um, and uh, I like to cook, but I'm not very, I'm not very, um, ambitious or experimental. I just like, there's like five or six things that I can cook really well. And I just kind of leave it at that. You had a big dinner tonight, though, Gary. I had a Slim Jim. Yeah. Yummy meat sticks. Yeah, no, Gary um, Gary cooks good British food. Yeah, I do a good, like, kind of like Sunday roast roast beef. I do a good shepherd's pie. Um, uh, not, I mean, again, not, re not really that many things that I'm really good at. But, like, you know, I'm good at, like I said, a handful of things that my, my mother taught me to make. But Lee is much more experimental. She makes this amazing kind of Guinness uh, chocolate cake. She makes her own ice cream, this really uh, amazing... Um, uh, maple flavored ice cream, which is really great. Uh, she does all kinds of. She just made this incredible, like Heath Bar uh, banana bread, which is like you know, it's the hardest it's ever been for me to, to stick on my uh, keto diet because it just tasted. I mean, it looked, I mean, it smelled amazing. It smelled like it would taste amazing, and I, I, oh yeah, it was really good. Turning it down was 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 not easy. <laughs> Kate asks, "How is keto going? It's going very well, thank you, Kate. I'm down about thirty two pounds." Uh, but it's been it's been great. I feel better. I feel healthier. Uh, my clothes fit better. Uh, you know, people notice, which is which is really nice uh, for me. Kate says you do look great in that suit. Thank you. And this is I want to point out this is not the same suit that I wore uh, on last night's show. I actually went back to Able Sisters and got a whole bunch of these uh, suit jackets uh, in different colors, in blue, in kind of a nice kind of burgundy red, in a gray and a black. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, one of the first, I think one of the, one of the jobs of a talk show host is to look good. And that's why I have this very, uh, beautiful hair, um, and why, you know, I'm going to have cool snazzy, uh, fashions, you know, I've got these cool, uh, glasses. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is a good look for me, I think. I gotta say, Adam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, uh, confess something to you right now. Uh-huh. It's a confession about why I'm so happy to be doing this show. Uh, not just right. because it's a cool idea that we were actually able to throw together really quickly. Not just because people are responding to it. Obviously, those are brilliant things. But I'll, but I'll let you, I, I think I and I think I only realized this now that I'm actually doing it. Like I don't know if you've ever if this has ever happened to you, but like when you discover something or do something, you instantly go you instantly go like, oh my god, I've been wanting to do this all my life. I just didn't know it until right now. Does that make sense? Uh, and that's how you're feeling about this right now? Yeah, because what I, it's not something I dreamed about as a kid growing up or anything like that. Or when I would watch TV, I never gave it much thought. But now that I'm doing it, I'm realizing that all my life I've really wanted to be a late night talk show host. That's quite the revelation to have live on your talk show. Because, I mean, for a long time, and Leah will tell you this, no joke. Like, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. It's, it's all true. For a long time, and I still kind of believe this, actually. I honestly actually still believe it. The, the, the best job in show business, the man who has the number one best job in show business, that if I could take any, one, any job in show business, um, it would be this. I'll tell you the job that I want, and I'm not making it up. I swear this is true. I would be the host of The Price is Right. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have mentioned that before. I would be the host of The Price is Right, and I'll tell you why. It's fantastic fun. 
and you ba basically get to be surrounded by people all day who are all having the absolute best day of their life. They're on The Price is Right, they're on TV, they're in Hollywood, and they're winning, hopefully they're winning fantastic prizes. Cars, showcases, vacations, tens of thousands of dollars worth of prizes. And that person is having just the best time, maybe not the best day of their life, but like the time of their life. They're just so happy and, you know, that's where you see Wilfred come on down and they're like freaking out, losing their shit as they're coming down the aisle. <laughs> And, like, they're just so happy and they're radiating so much happy, positive energy. And you just get to be around that all day. And you really get the sense as well that a lot of the people that are on The Price is Right are people... I mean, they're people from all walks of life. But oftentimes they have people on there that you just... And they'll say it sometimes. they like, oh, my God, I really need this car. Or, like, oh, my God, I could really use that $10,000. I would pay off all my debts or whatever. And then they win... And it's just the best feeling. And they hug you. They're hugging Drew Carey. They used to hug Bob Barker. And like you just, and everyone's happy and smiling. And like you just get to do that all day. And they just kind of feel like, like that would never get old. That's, I mean, that, you know, Bob Barker did it for like how many decades? Drew Carey's done it now for probably 20 years. Like, I don't think you get tired of that job. I think you only stopped doing it. Like, Bob Barker only did it, only stopped doing it when he got really, really old. And Drew Carey's up there. He's like in his 60s or something now. He's, he'll be doing it for 20 more years. As long as he can still hold that microphone, he's going to be doing it. Um, Did you just say Drew Carey's in his 60s? He is. I, 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 yeah, he's, it's, it's in that. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I don't know, 61, 63, whatever. But he's 60-something. Does that make you feel old, Adam? Oh, boy. He's 61. He's 61. There you go. We just, we just mm -hmm. looked it up. There you go. I wasn't far off. Bob Barker is 96. My goodness. And, but he's and I, always been 96. That's true, for a million years. Basically, that would be the number one job. I guess so their number two job would be um, late night talk show host. I used to love, I never really was like a fan of late night uh, talk shows like the real ones. In the UK, where I grew up, that, that wasn't a concept. Like they kind of have them now because the England uh, ends up copying everything in terms of American media. Like we want to have our version of American things. So uh, over the years we've tried, in the UK, they've tried to copy the classic kind of Johnny Carson, David Letterman format. And it's never really worked. Like Graham Norton's very popular, but it's a different kind of talk show. Um, like they've never had like a host behind a desk who's uh, like really taken off. But in the in the US, obviously that's what generations of TV viewers uh, grew up on. You know, Steve Allen, who was the original host of The Tonight Show, then, you know, Johnny Carson and then Jay Leno, Letterman, obviously. Now we have a whole new generation with Fallon and Kimmel and Stephen Colbert and, uh, you know, Seth Meyers and all these great... Uh, comedians like Adam when you were a kid do you did you have those talk shows in Canada or did you have like do you just get the American versions oh yeah we 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 get all the American versions we had some Canadian things but nothing quite compared and uh Conan O'Brien though was my right. big thing I, I loved Conan yeah and of course and of course how can I forget Conan he actually was my personal favorite when I said I don't really watch uh, talk shows I never really did but but Conan, if I were if I if I were going to watch one, Conan is the one that I would watch. Like the idea of sitting up late to watch like a whole hour and a half of comedy and interviews and stuff like that uh, just sounded kind of lame to me. I, I say that as I present a new show <laughs> late at night filled with comedy and interviews. Leah, are you looking at your phone? That's very rude for a guest in the middle of a show. Uh, yeah, I was because that just went on forever. <laughs> wow. Hold on. I feel that I feel like that's worth a worth an emote. That's just that's just whatever leah did you was it a thing did you give a shit about talk i know you were kind of a rebellious kid so like the idea of like staying up late to watch uh letterman probably didn't strike you as particularly rebellious but I mean, maybe i'm wrong i was not really a rebellious kid i mean i did yes, a lot you of bad were. Shit. you were the, you well, black no, sheep of the family I, I did a lot of bad shit but i was also really responsible like i was a total stoner but i used to stop two weeks before finals so i could study i really loved letterman and i i liked watching conan Oh God, my mom is is in the chat. <laughs> wow. Um, hi, mom. When I was younger, I just watched whatever my parents had on. You know. Your mother in chat says she didn't watch TV. She crawled out the windows. What's that about? Oh, I snuck out a lot. I used to put a milk crate um, under my window during the day so that when I uh, wanted to sneak out at night, I didn't have to jump down too far. <laughs> so, um, 
and I would and I would I would uh, open my windows just a bit before they set the alarms so that my windows wouldn't be included on the alarm panel. Wow, you gotta I do mean, it. I mean, this this yeah. is I mean this is this is some high end shit for a non rebellious kid. <laughs> but my mom knew. It's not like I, I anyway whatever. Um, <laughs> We have another guest on the show tonight, and she's been waiting very patiently in the green room. And as I'm talking here, I'm sure she's getting the message that she should now come and stand at the top of the stairs. Please don't expect Brie Larson to walk in, because like maybe next week, but not today. It's not we're not there yet. And again, and by the way, please do any opportunity that you have to tell people about the show, tweet about it, uh, you know, use the social media, whatever it is, you know, flip flop, whatever it is the fucking kids are into these days. Yeah, make make a flip flop and uh, stick that on the internet. <laughs> And uh, and uh, you know tell tell all your young friends about it that this is the future. Quibby, what's that? I don't even, whatever. This is the future. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna introduce <laughs> our next non-celebrity guest to the show. You've met uh, uh, my wife. Uh, now meet her best friend Tanya. <laughs> Yay! This is Tanya, everybody. And uh, if she looks a little bit, if she looks a little bit like the log lady from Twin Peaks, uh, that is entirely deliberate, isn't that correct? Yes, it is. I am learning both Twitch and Discord basically for the first time. It's a today, crash course so for all of us. It's an absolute crash course. I think I've gotten younger by about ten years by learning both of those. So <laughs> next, we're gonna get, gonna get you a TikTok. So. Oh, God, um, no. <laughs> so ta ta Tanya and Leah, when they knew they were coming on the show, got very excited in, in, in a kind of, oh my God, what am I going to wear uh, kind of way. In fact, when Tanya came over to the island to record, she brought over several outfits to try on for Leah. Just just like they were going out like on a real night out on the town. They wanted to, they wanted to wear the, uh, the right outfits for the show. And again, I appreciate that. You know, we don't want people just showing up here in whatever. Uh, it's a talk show. You know, this is going out to a lot of viewers. And, uh, you know, you want to give a good account of yourself. So... Uh, Tanya, are you ha are you happy with what you chose in the end for the show? Yes, I think so. Uh, I had some good options. A few that didn't make the cut were like a casual musketeer look and uh, another one of a person who's about to put you inside the Wicker Man and burn you. All right. of those I think great. You should, um, I think you should show the Wicker Man look real quick if you still oh, have really? your magic wand. Uh, let me can see you wand? Can, can you do a is wand? That okay? Yeah, uh, let's see I it. Let's, let me get the camera on you. Go for uh, it. This is my uh, little hippie Wicker Man burning uh, outfit. Let's see. There, I'm talking the original it. one, not oh, the Oh, yeah. Original. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. See, you're repurposing, yeah. see, you're repurposing some of that Bunny Day stuff there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my wardrobe is still pretty limited, so, you know. Doing the best I can. Uh, I would like to officially give a thanks to uh, Gary and Leah for bringing Animal Crossing into my life. Yeah, and so let's let's talk about that, Tanya. How are you enjoying Animal Crossing? Is this your first Animal Crossing game? No, I've played uh, the one before that. Uh, not the home decorating one, but the, a new leaf, I think, was the 3DS version. Right. And that's how I got introduced to it through you and Leah, and that was absolutely delightful. But this is just next level yeah i mean this um, is i mean un unquestionably the, the the biggest and best animal crossing game ever made and, and i love seeing people taking it to the next level beyond well, the next I'm, level well you're seeing it right now you're part of it <laughs> yeah. you're a part of history um now leah i know that your your history of animal crossing goes all the way back to the beginning you were hardcore hardcore into the gamecube version uh yeah so um different gary my friend gary and i uh, we used to go out to clubs like four or five nights a week, but um, we would set alarms uh, on our phones to remind us to go home so that we could catch like fish and insects that were only available <laughs> during certain hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was intense. We were we were very much into that game and you know getting every single little bit out of it that we could. Right. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, like, what? Would the, I guess the, the next major one after that was New Leaf, right? And then you got into that too. Uh, yeah, I actually have two copies of New Leaf because you have to have a separate copy for a different town. Right. And I wanted to have two <laughs> for reasons I, I don't even know why. Um, so, yeah, I bought the game twice and I, I, st I have two versions of it on my DS that I still occasionally check into. 
Right, right, did right. Did you play uh, Wild World? I did not. Which one was Wild World? That was for the Wii. Oh, geez. Did, did, did you skip that altogether, Leah? Yeah, we didn't really play the Wii all that much. I mean, we had it, of course. Like, we fucking went yeah, online but yeah, for I mean, it. it was but, like, you know, the Wii was that um, thing that you bought and then never really did anything with. Oh, City Folk. Oh, City Folk. Well, which, what was Wild World, World, World on then? I, oh, Wild World was original, on the original yeah. DS. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, chat. Oh, my God. No, no, no. <laughs> Wear a mask, for God's sake. I have a doctor's mask in my inventory. Don't make me go get it. I will. I totally uh -oh, will. Too. Uh, I should have worn Gary, it. Gary, you actually have something else in your inventory. I don't know if you noticed. There's a little present in there for Oh, you that's for right. Me. I do. I do. There's a little present. I don't, I don't know if I can open it. Can I? Shall I try? Adam, you want to try and see? Adam, what are you doing? Yeah. Get out of my space. <laughs> I'm trying to. Get, I'm trying to get around. <laughs> Let's see if I can open it. Uh, it is. Oh, it's a very nice gift. Let's open it. It's a privet tea. You should wear it. Oh, it's Russian because uh, you, you are Russian. Well, thank you so much. Hello in Russian. It says what? Blow? Hello in oh, Russian. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Yes, it, I, uh, I could. And is that one? And is, and is that what privet means? Hello. Privet. 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 Means hello. Privet. Oh yes. So you know, it's a very sort of uh, polite. I'm a master of dialects. Be. You can't come to someone's house and not bring a present of some sort. That's so, just rude. So, Tanya, you are you uh, live here in America. You are an American citizen, but you were born in Russia. I was technically born in the USSR. So, in this, you were born in the Soviet Union. So, I mean, but you're not that old. So, that must have been like in the last days of the Soviet Union. Oh uh, no, I actually had a full, uh, I think, eleven years of living in the USSR before. When were I you born? In Russia, seventy nine. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, because the Soviet Union didn't collapse until like nineteen ninety one. What yeah, was it? and we uh, moved here in 93. So this is fascinating. How good are your memories of uh, being a child growing up in the Soviet Union? Oh, I have plenty. I cannot vouch for their accuracy, but, um, you know, I certainly have memories. I mean, and we moved around a few times, so I got to live in a few different parts of the country and uh, travel to visit my grandparents. So, you know, there's all sorts of things that... Um, for instance, um, one thing that used to be a thing, and maybe it still is, there would be these vending machines that you could come up to that would have like flavored sparkling water, usually lukewarm, and you drop a coin, but you drink from a communal glass that you would rinse out right there, and then you would your drink would get poured into this communal glass, you drink it, and then you leave the glass and walk away. What? Like, that's yeah. That's yeah, not totally. a, that's not at all hygienic. <laughs> uh, no, no, you would have this like one of those, you know, those little pressure rinsers they use in bars where you oh, press geez. the glass down and yeah, they had those. Wow. And, you know, my mom would send me to the store for bread when I was like six years old. I mean, those are just some things of growing up in I mean, the good old USSR. That's really fascinating. How, how well do you remember the fall of the Berlin Wall and all that stuff? Not a lot. I don't know if that's because my focus was kind of limited or because... Uh, the news that we were getting was very specifically restricted. Um, I mean, I know when it happened, but and it, I'm sure it had an effect on my life. But I was a kid. I was, what, 10, 11 years old. So what was your view of America when you were as a kid growing up? Uh, so confused because it was all completely based on television. The two pop cultural references I had when we were moving here that I anticipated life to be would, were the movie Fame oh, and wow. the soap opera Santa Barbara. Those were like my two things that I knew, oh, this is America. Beyond Those are like the like, two ran most random things I could possibly imagine. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, they weren't like this at all when I moved here. Nobody breaks out into song in high school. I think the, 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 the cliche is the idea of like the young kid growing up in Russia and kind of yearning to go to America where, you know, there's freedom and stuff like that. Is that, is there, I mean, is that a thing at all? I, I think it is in some ways, especially if you get a glimpse of what life is there. You know, when we first got in McDonald's in Moscow, it was a, the line to get into it was about five or six hours long. Oh, and wow. I still remember the taste of the little cheeseburger and the fries and that hot apple pie. And when you came here and we ate at McDonald's, it just didn't taste the same. And it just, it tasted heavenly when we were in Russia, but here it's just, you know, basic old fast food. Right. Hey, I did I, have a go ahead. computer, so we what had kind of, computer games. What kind, again. What, I, what, and what kind of computer games did you have? Oh, we had a Commodore 64. Oh, that's what I had. I loved so, that. 
We've got a question from the chat. Haley Rabbit asks, uh, did you know English prior to emigrating? I presume that's not aimed at me, uh, but, at, but at Tanya. I think that was for you, Gary, actually. I, um, I, I, no. I did, but it was mostly Cockney <laughs> rhyming slang and no one could understand me. <laughs> I so. started getting tutoring lessons about two years before I moved here. Okay. Because you knew you were moving here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then Did you I find was, it easy to learn English, English as a second language? I've always I've always been told that um, English is actually one of the most difficult languages to learn. Did you find it difficult to learn? I don't know because I now that I speak it so fluently and to the point that Russian to me feels like a second language, I can't imagine what it was like not to speak it. Right. But it's challenging. I mean, I assume it's as challenging as me trying to learn French or Italian right now. Do you still um, speak Russian much, like around your family and things like that? Yeah, I speak it to my parents, to my brothers. Um, I don't have a lot of friends I speak it to. Um, most of my Russian and Ukrainian immigrant friends are people who came here even before I did. So English is just our first language. <laughs> what, what, I mean, at, what, at this point, do you speak English better than you speak Russian? Yes, I do. Okay, but you yeah. can, but you still, but you still would qualify as like by any standard, you'd be considered fluent in Russian still. I right? can read books. Okay. I can understand where people are saying to me. Yeah. The yeah. The two things I can't do is I am not good at translating English to Russian in a way that's like eloquent. Right. And I also have a hard time understanding pop songs when someone is singing in Russian. Now. But you can uh, translate Russian slapping video captions. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. No, you I know. You actually anticipated <laughs> my next question. The reason why I know Tanya can still speak Russian is when I first got into uh, Russian competitive uh, face slapping uh, tournaments, <laughs> as you know, one of my favorite things. Um, some of the episodes didn't have subtitles. Some had kind of Google captions on them, but some didn't. And I really wanted to understand the context of what was going on behind these two big dudes slapping each other in the face. And um, and so I would literally uh, ask Tanya through Leah. She would send messages uh, asking her to translate this and that. And, um, uh, and she helped me uh, translate some of the... Um, uh, some of the Russian that was necessary for me to understand, you know, the broader context of what was I mean, going on in the, the slapping the international tournament. language of slapping each other. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's why slapping has been so popular, is it is a truly international language. Everyone understands a good slap in the face. Uh, so my mom is asking, she says, how did you and Leah meet? Oh, man. Tanya. Well, <laughs> we wait, 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 sorry, excuse me, hold on, hold on. Would you, would you like to come sit behind the desk, Leah? <laughs> I think we should let her do that. I just let's let's just not forget who's the host here. <laughs> I mean, I I think that you forgot you were supposed to be interviewing earlier when you went off on a five minute tangent. Well, but sorry, whatever. but what what you just interrupted was Tanya ask answering what I thought was a very fascinating question. And we'll be right back after. That this. was part of my routine. <laughs> so, let's continue. Hey, Linda K O three O seven in the chat asks, how did you and Leah meet, Tanya? Oh, like many very good relationships it was formed on the internet i found out about leah through uh i guess a internet long distance boyfriend of hers at the time that i knew from college all these years later i don't talk to him but her and i are still in each other's lives the first time i met leah in person she actually was out here with her dad he we went to Girardelli square for hot chocolates and we have super cute adorable black and white photo booth pictures of me and leah we had the same black bob haircut back then. Oh it's yeah, very precious. And I still had braces. I was a baby. So cute. <laughs> would you would you two say that you're BFFs? I'm the yeah. West Coast BFF, and she also has an East Coast one. I, I do. That's right. Yes. I have I have my East Coast bestie Kelly that I've known since sixth grade. But what if you had to choose? You're rude. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking the tough question. That's my job as the host. I'm not here to throw softballs. I'm here to ask the real questions. Yeah. Is it gonna, yeah. I'm going to turn this into Jerry Springer before the end of the night. <laughs> we need someone else to storm down the stairs halfway through. Hey, Kishore yeah, Hari. Kishore Hari asks the question, and I got to say, you might have a point. Gary isn't Leah's BFF. Maybe it was a trick question. He is her BHF, best husband forever. Gary That's is good more enough. than my BFF. I fit somewhere within the bubble of people that she probably like maybe would give like half a kidney to. All I right. would give you a whole kidney for oh, sure. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we try uh, taking a little break? You know, we're very lucky to have uh, uh, great commercial sponsors already lined up. No flipping. I've always wanted to say that. No flipping. Uh, <laughs> let's give this a try. Yeah. <laughs> 
are you gonna answer? <laughs> Wait, what? Quiet! Oh, no. <laughs> Magnavolt, the final word in auto security. No embarrassing alarm noise, no need to trouble the police. And it won't even run down your battery. Magnavolt, lethal response. So, uh... Thanks to Magnavolt for, for, for sponsoring that. Yes, now, unfortunately... Uh, we can still hear you during the commercials. That is something I should have, uh, you know, the the, com the commercials aren't the time for the guests to kind of like, you know, talk behind the host's back like you I would know, on I'm a regular, really excited about regular show. Box, if you can just, you know, keep quiet for like 60 seconds, just if you can just keep quiet for 60 seconds, that really, really would be great. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'd really. <laughs> <laughs> That's challenging, but I'll do my best. Adam, how do you think it's going so far? I think it's going a little long. You think it's long? As the person who cut the last one. Oh, are you worried that you're going to have to cut, <laughs> cut too, too long a show? So now we've reached Gary. the point. Yes, what? What? Uh, the what? top right corner. What? Top right corner? What about it? Is there, is there not? Oh, the logo there? disappeared. Let me get that back up there. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, 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 look, we're, we're working it here. Don't, for, don't forget, in a real professional environment, the host just has to worry about being the host. He's got assistants. He's got editors. He's got producers. He's got people like working the, the all the buttons and the switches in the in the in the you know in the control room, uh, running the board. I'm doing it all myself over here. I'm running the stream deck, calling the YouTube clips. I'm asking the questions. You know, I'm you know this is a lot. You know, just bear that in mind when I make a mistake. Uh, because you know it's 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 you know what what I'm doing over here is really nothing short of a Herculean achievement, and I think you know might be good to think about that before you uh, uh, toss any more toss any more casual criticisms uh, my way. Tiff Stardust says you're doing great, Gary. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Fo eleven oh seven says you guys need some more band members. Adam, would you agree with that? Like most most of the great late night bands, it's not just one person. It is a band. Would you would you would you like to have like another some accompaniment over there, like a guitar? or something what 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 do you what are you thinking are you happy being a one-man band my dream is that one day uh this guitar right over here will be played by the great kk slider Ooh. i'm telling you of all this brie larson elijah wood chrissy teigen you i you i would turn them all down to get kk slider on this show yeah I if kk slider I... was on this show i i don't i mean it, that, that would be like the drake plays Fortnite with ninja moment <laughs> that, 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 this show would blow up. This show would blow up like nothing you've ever seen. I might have to make a call to my friends at Nintendo. I want to know all of Isabel's deep dark secrets. Do you think she has deep dark secrets? Absolutely. The nice ones always do. But you're nice. Yeah. Hey, Director Stephanie, thank you for this tier one subscription. <laughs> uh, great to uh, have you here. You know, I'm also a director. In fact, recently... <laughs> <laughs> she almost missed that in one fact, in fact in fact recently i happened to uh direct my own film and i actually funny and I, I you know i usually would say this to a guest but i i i brought a clip <laughs> it's only 24 seconds long so you know it's an easy it's an easy um uh uh, 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 uh movie to watch it's not going to take up too much of your time let's check it out right now Not so fast, King Tut. I'm Batman. Batman! Ah! Batman! I'm gonna Batman you. I Batman you into oblivion. Ah! Thank you. I'm Batman. So, you know. No? No good? <laughs> No good. Man. I did actually, uh, I did actually direct a sequel, and you know the sequels, sequels are always uh, bigger and better than um, that which came before. Do you want to see the sequel? Uh, I think you know everybody wants to see. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, Batman movie take two. Okay, guys. Oh wait, that's Batman's voice. I got it wrong. Let's try it again. <laughs> what does Orca sound like? I don't know. I 
think Orca sounds like this. I'm Orca. And we're gonna take over Gotham City. That's right, Batman. I'm Batarina, and I'm gonna help you take over Gotham City. And I'm Harley Quinn, and I'm totally insane, and I got bald too. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh no, it's Batman! That's right, villains, I'm Batman, and I heard about your evil schemes. I'm gonna bust up this party. Batman! Ah! Yeah, that's right, Batarina. Get over there. Uh, ah! Only Harley Quinn remains. Well, I'm gonna get you, Batman! My boyfriend, the Joker's gonna get you too! I don't think so. I'm Batman. Ah, Batman! I'm Batman in you. I'm gonna Batman you all up and down this piece. Ah! Okay, you win, Batman. I promise to be good from now on. Yeah, that's right. Stay in school, kids. Finn. So you know, it's original. <laughs> it's it's original content. Definitely content. That is the kind of content you know. You know when you hear about like like a young a young director getting like signed up to de develop to, to do like the next Marvel movie because they had some like amazing hot short film. Well, this I mean I feel like this could be my ticket there to get into that. I've got I've got as much I've got as much chance as the next guy. You should Absolutely. share the Star Wars one. I don't think I have it on YouTube. No, you sh you shared it once before. Yeah, but I don't know if it came from YouTube. I think yeah, it's like I don't think he has it on YouTube. <laughs> hey, yeah, let's... Leah. Wait, maybe I do. Oh. No, nobody. I, I, all all of all of my videos are just my pathetic kills in PUBG. Like I think pretty much oh, every. I, used to I enjoy I, watching those. Pretty much every kill I ever got in PUBG is in is on. I recorded it and uploaded it to YouTube and made Leah watch them. Because you didn't make me. I liked watching them. They did were you, really funny. Did you really? Let's see if I can find I did, a good one. Yeah, that's like the only game that I that I that I really watched anybody stream like right. back when you were playing. Yeah, I'll show you a quick one. It's only twenty seconds. Let's do it real quick. I like the crazy car ones. This is me. Look at this. Boom. Boom. Dead. 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 Boom. Boom. Dead. 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 Look at this guy. Look at this guy. No, you're done. You're done. Pro gamer. You did it all without looking down the barrel, too. Oh yeah, 360 no scoping. That's how I shoot. <laughs> that's how I shoot bar uh, balloons out of the air in Animal Crossing as well. Just bam. Got an instinct for it. Do you buy any turnips today, Adam? Yeah, I I went by my turnip lady. Told myself I was only gonna buy one full inventory load. <laughs> oh, you bought. Later, how many did you I was buy? Loading three. Three? Oh my god. Yeah. Now was this on your own island? Yeah. What was your price? Uh, 94. Oh, that's not bad. Nice. That's not yeah. bad. So I think anything under 95 is respectable. Does anyone know how old that small child selling turnips actually is? And should we call some sort of child? Is she a small child? Agency? She's not a small child, is she? Daily she's May? She's a small child. Daisy yeah. May? She's just because she's got, just she's got a snotty nose. No, no, no. Her grandma has bad knees. So she's selling the turnips until grandma gets better. Well, I mean, that sounds fair enough. I'm not a fan of. I mean, maybe if nose. you're a Soviet child, it's I don't a like. I don't. Reality I don't like the snotty with, nose. But... <laughs> I've said many. I've said many times before. Animal Crossing is low key the most political game out there. It makes a lot of. It makes has a lot of a lot to say about economic in, uh, inequality, social injustice, uh, social stratification. There's a lot going on behind the scenes at Animal Crossing. Somebody should like someone. Someone at one of these fucking places, like you know Vice or um, you know Kotaku, should write a, write a think piece about it. Yeah, I guess in the hierarchy of people that get in trouble, it would be first Harv, then that art dealer, and then maybe has Grandma. Harv, Harv is has crazy. anyone gone to Harv's Island a second time? No. no. Why no. would you? Like, what do you? What do you even do over there? Uh, exactly. Have you ever seen those casting couch videos on the internet? Oh, God. Oh. That whole business is real shady. Yeah, like, that actually made me like kind of uncomfortable the first time I went to that <laughs> island. Well, the only the only time I went to that yeah, island. it was cr it was like it, it was it, really it was, weird. It was like going to Alfred Molina's house at the end of Boogie Nights. You know, when he's like dancing around in the silk robe, coked off coked off his head with a with a pistol. I don't, <laughs> that's what that's what it kind of felt like. Yeah, who like who's gone? No one's gone back since. No one no one's gone back since. I don't uh, I, I, I I don't I don't get that yet. Maybe maybe there's more to come. Like nobody knew what that secret beach at the back of the island was until Red showed up. So in drink the, the Kool Aid. Uh, wedding update. You actually they've shown that. Oh the update, yeah, you know, I think you might be right about that. Yes. Yeah, the wedding. Yeah, the, so the wedding. So Harv is going to start to come into the picture because those weddings are going to take place over there. I think he's going to have like a wedding chapel or something. Yeah. So he's not just a pervert. He's also a wedding planner. You know, a pervert can also have. <laughs> well, a yeah. yeah why? Well, yeah, you can you can have multiple interests. <laughs> 
so yeah, I mean, I'm excited about uh, Red and his uh, artworks, and uh, I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't buy a piece uh, today because all everything he had to sell on the first day was fake. But it has been interesting looking at the uh, the differences between the fake and the real artworks and learning how to spot. When I say learning how to spot them, I mean just reading a Polygon article. But yeah, like for, you, you know, did, you did buy a piece today. I did, but I went to someone else's island to do it. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Does he stay on the island all day? Because I, I might want to go know. after this and buy one just for decoration. I honestly don't know. Tanya, are you in the turnip market? Is it because that's how you make big money in this game? Yeah, yeah. I um, I sold a little too early last time. So now I've purchased more turnips at 100. <laughs> 100 is a tolerable rate, and I just have to make sure and play the stock market and not, you That's know, right. I have to keep my cool and not sell so early because I didn't even double what I paid for it. Now, are you, are you actually looking for prices on other people's islands to get that best price, or are you just looking for the best price on your own island? Oh, I haven't gotten that far. You know, I'm playing in the game pretty slow. I I know, for instance, I could just be out running around trying to get onto Tarantula Island, but to me that actually sounds like a nightmare. So No, I, that's I, a I hassle. Wanna... Honestly, the way you're going to make real money in this game, and again, this is what I mean about low-key um, uh, being political. Like, you can make a certain amount of money, like making hot items, slaving over a DIY workbench, you know, doing manual labor, and you'll make a bit, you'll make a bit of money. Yeah. But the way yeah. the, where the smart players are, they don't get their hands dirty, they don't break a sweat, they just play the stock market. And they make well, that's millions. Where I'm headed. That's where you want to be. You 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 got you got to be where the smart pe smart money is. And, I know you um, and Leah are billionaires, so I know. Yeah, we're well, multi about. multi billionaires. <laughs> and so I, and and the way to do this is you know you you help each other. Like you know if 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 Leah's got a good price on her island, she'll let me know. I'll go over there. Like you need to get in on that little network. Like you know if if one of us get a great turnip price, we'll we'll let you know, and you can come over and sell at a great profit. Yeah, totally. Uh, you could also try using Turnip Exchange. Um, I'm going to post a link to that in the chat. Um, I actually used that this morning because I always panic after I buy a lot of turnips. So I'll go and find an island, you know, not like the 600 bells islands that Gary finds, but I'll just get one that's like, you know, like 300 bells or something and bring over just enough to um, cover my investment. So I did, I did one of those turnip exchanges last week and it did work out and I made a good profit, but like it really annoyed me. So I, 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 again, thanks to my friend Kate who got me on, got me on that. One of her followers had a great price that he shared with her and she shared it with me because she knows I'm always looking for the best deal on turnips but it wasn't as simple as getting a dodo code like you go to a website and you type in a you are you type in a, a name and you take your place in a queue and when you finally get your you know they only let so many people onto the island at once and once you get to the front of the queue it gives you the dodo code and you can go but it also shows you who's the website also shows you who's currently on the island and how long they've been there and the people in front of me have been there for about 15 minutes now I know how long it takes to go to the nook boys and make it like that you're not haggling with the nook boys you just it's just getting you know, you're just selling it takes, it takes, you know, even with the travel time, and I know that going back and forth between islands can be slow, five minutes in and out max, if you're considerate. <laughs> if you're inconsiderate, apparently what you do, because this is what Kate found out they were doing, the people in front of us, you're not, you don't just sell your turn. So then you then fuck about Enable Sisters for five more minutes trying on clothes. I know. Yeah, that's messed up. I was saying to Kate, what the fuck? Get them the fuck out of there. What are they doing? Don't know there are people waiting in line. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're waiting for a table at a restaurant and the people at the table there are clearly finished. And the food has long been cleared away. And they can see you standing there. But they have water there. to drink. And you know, it's really not like, like, look, don't get me wrong. At the end of a, at the end of a nice dinner, I like to sit around the table a little bit and just, you know, pontificate and just, you know, digest my meal. I like to do that. I get that. 10 minutes maximum. I would say is all you need. And then you're ready to get up and go. Especially, especially when there are people waiting for a table. But okay, Great. so then someone has, has someone come up with like a fashion exchange where people go, these are the cool clothes being sold on my island today. Get in the queue because oh, yeah, I would be Oh yeah, people do there. that on the turnip exchange site as well. Um, nice. They'll, they'll, like there are some rare items like the million dollar crown. Uh, so mm -hmm. people will charge like, you know, like one or two Nook Miles tickets for entrance, and then you can go to their shop and buy the stuff that you want. Uh, so Grey Knight in chat had a good idea. He says that um, he blocks off his Able Sisters when running a turnip queue. Nice. Yeah. I like that. And all of I, them, well, and, and some of them are charging really exorbitant. Like they demand like a really expensive tip before they'll let you into the island. 
Oh, yeah. And like, that's how some of these people are making their money, not just by uh, selling turnips, but by selling access, basically taking a commission on what everyone else is selling. Maybe that's the where the smart money is. I had prices of 500 something, not last week, but the week before. And I basically walled off everything around where this, so they could only get to the store. I posted the Dodo code on Twitter and said, hey, this is my price, tips appreciated. You know, it's gonna be a nightmare getting in and out, but if you want it, do it. And people did it, and they just kept leaving bags of money by me. By the end <laughs> of it, I think I had made three to four million bells. Oh, wow. Uh, and weirdly, people weren't just taking the bells. Like I wasn't running around picking them up all the time because I was working. Wow, and, that's honesty. Uh, I could just see them leaving the bells and heading off the island and coming back and leaving, you know, their 10% or something. I mean, how do I do this in real life though? <laughs> right. I just want to pay off my mortgage, man. How oh, much yeah, is I your mean, mortgage? That's the main job. I don't know. I don't even have like extra floors. I just have three main rooms off Dude, of me. I'll, I'll come over and drop a bunch of bells so you can pay your mortgage. I did it and, for a random Twitch streamer today. See, and this is why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than a kidney. Mega Pilgrim in the chat says you got to get a second game and a second Switch, then time travel to a day with good prices and leave it on that day. Well, no yeah. no, no offense, Mega Pilgrim, this is not directed at you, but I personally think that time travelers are the lowest form of life on Earth. I think they're scum and they should be, they should be eradicated with extreme prejudice. I'm not a fan of time travelers. Um, I think it goes against the spirit of the game and uh, I personally want nothing to do with them. Having said that, having said that, I have done quite a lot of business with time travelers, <laughs> but that's business. <laughs> that's business. Um, yes. Do you want your fruit rot or something like business, that? You business it? is different. So there have been a few times when someone, this is before I wised up, but a few people have said to me over the <laughs> over the last few weeks, oh, Gary, I've got this amazing price on turnip. It's 500, 600 bells of turnip. Of course, who would say no? I don't ask questions. At one time, I literally really did run to the airport in my pajamas. I was so excited. I got, I, I got to tell you something, though. Kate, who's in the chat right now and who will actually be a real guest on the couch here soon. When Kate heard that there were great turnip prices going a couple of weeks ago, she literally jumped out of, jumped out of her real life bed in pajamas and raced, <laughs> raced to turn on her switch and get a deal on those turnips. That's so excellent. Like, oh yeah, I was actually in the shower um, listening to the stream and you sent me a message. So I checked it just in case something was wrong and I hopped out of the shower to go buy turnips. Turnips, turnips, man. Serious business. Serious, serious, serious I'm business. I'm just gonna put this out there. I do recall the time last week when Gary got a great code for turnips and for whatever reason never you know well I, and I, Adam, you that. know you know what the re That's you know cold. you know full well what the reason is oftentimes when you're given these codes you're given them on the understanding that you will play you will keep them close you're not just going to give them out to any Tom Dick or Harry oh you're right it, this is nothing like the week before when someone made me not give out the code but then I still DM'd it to you and said don't tell anyone I gave it to you. well I mean, look, if, if you if you want to go around if you want to go around betraying your friends that's your business I'm not going to do it to mine oh my goodness. I'm glad no, you did I, I I benefited from it yeah, I don't like time travelers. Having said that, when I've gone to... I, what happened was, like, I, I, I tell you this much, I've never gone to an island uh, that I knew to be a time traveler's island, ever. It was when I got there that I realized. And by that point, I'm already off the plane. It's a long flight. I'm tired. You know, the last thing you want to do is like get right back on a plane and turn around. Like, you've wasted my time. So like, I'm there. Okay, the price is there. I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll sell. the t It's a victimless crime. And I'll go home. Now, I think we've reached the part of the show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, where we ask our guests. Uh, they're invited to step up to the microphone and tell a joke. That's it. They don't have to do a stand-up routine. They don't, have to, they don't have to do like a whole song and dance. But they but just tell just tell a joke. And that's very, very straightforward. Leah doesn't want to do that. She's exempted because she's my wife. I can't make her do anything she doesn't want to do. Uh, but my guests, I can uh, easily uh, push around. So I'm going to ask Tanya uh, to uh, to step up to the microphone here. Give her, a, give her a big round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Let me just put away my fancy outfit changing wand so I can think clearly. Right. Just one joke. And, you know, maybe if, the, maybe if the audience likes it, you can tell another. Let's see how it goes. But, like... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy stylings of Tanya. Well, let's start with a favorite of mine. You guys ready? All right. What's brown and sticky? I don't I... know what. A stick. Oh! <laughs> oh, thank you, Hamburger <laughs> Helper. That's, that's the other option. 
Uh, wow. All right, let me, yeah. Um, let me do one more. All right. What can so I? Look, 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 look. Your first one. Like the, the first one, you get a mulligan. You get a freebie. So let's give that. Yeah. Let's give that another try. <laughs> oh, I don't actually even know what's happening because I can't hear the reactions. I don't know if there's music being played. All I hear is just us talking. So. Okay. Well, that's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, let's let's have let's have another joke. The last one All went right. down very well. It did. Oh, yes. Well, oh, I was at barn store. It brought, brought the house down. All right. How about a cultural joke? Since we were talking about. What does a Russian bride get from her husband on her wedding day that is long and hard? I don't know. Uh, a new last name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I, that one's that one's not so bad. That one's that one's not so bad. I like that one yeah. better than the other one. Uh, I I'm have three jokes prepared. So do you want me to just do oh, my third? Oh, one see, I oh, see. It's back? like you know what it's like. It's like karaoke. You don't want to do the first song, but then once you've done it, like you can't get them off the microphone. Look. Now, Ta now Tani wants to stay up here and do a whole routine. No, no, no. I just, I did my homework. I had options A, B, and three. A, B, and three. How does that work? <laughs> That's for the music geeks in the audience. All okay. Right. Okay. I'm listening. I decided to sell my theremin. I hadn't touched it in years. Yeah. Okay. I get that one. It's a bit, a bit intellectual, <laughs> a bit rarefied. Hey, I, I have high standards for your audience. Thank you. Thank you. No, but, but you shouldn't know. I shouldn't? No, this audience is... <laughs> It's pearls before swine. All right, I'm gonna go sit back down. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sit back at the uh, at the desk here. So that's gonna oh, be I a thing. You were gonna. Oh, well, I can't. I can't think of any. I can't think of any good jokes anymore. I used to be able to do this, but they say the memory is the first thing to go. And um, I, I used to. I used to be great at telling jokes. I used to know lots of them. Do you have? Do you still have any, Adam? Maybe while you're doing one, I could think of one. Let's see here. All right, let me get behind here and. Uh... Let's let's be professional. Oh, I can hide. I can fern. hide behind the fern here, and you don't even see me. And now it looks like we're just on you. This okay. This is going to be the new the new stand up comedy <laughs> angle. All right, I've discovered that with me with me lurking creepily behind this fern. Look over there. Like I'm ready to like I'm ready Next to murder to the tanuki? you. Next right. to uh, Also, I will make it clear this is not from my milk based set. No, I do, I do like your jokes about milk though. They are particularly good. Ooh, I Though uh, I I. Uh, it is dairy based. <laughs> oh my god! It's as far afield as it gets. Oh my goodness! Um, did you hear about the cheese factory in France that exploded? No. All that was left was debris. Okay, I actually like that one. <laughs> I like that one. That's that's Your an improvement over yesterday for sure. That's a good one. Oh, okay, I've got a good one for you. You ready? Two hydrogen atoms are walking down the street, and one of them says to the other. Oh no, I've lost an electron. And the other one says, are you sure? And he says, yes, I'm positive. <laughs> that's, that's, that's about as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. <laughs> it was better than the wafer joke. I will give you that. I like the wafer joke. I know you do. You've been telling it for the last 15 years. <laughs> Maybe we should wrap this up. We've been on the air for almost two hours. I think, I think we've I think we've accomplished what we came here to do, which was like see if we can put together another one of these shows, uh, up the production values a little bit while not screwing up too much. We, I mean, we, we screwed up plenty. I screwed up plenty. Leah screwed up plenty. Hey, I, only I screwed was up once. perfect. I was perfect. FYI, Tanya was 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 great. And you and by the way, you were both great guests. So thank you um, for having us. Thank, thank you for coming. Uh, let's have a let's have a round of applause. <laughs> For our great guests. And our host and our band leader. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, really cool to be part of something at the ground floor. Yeah, you're in I'm on the ground floor never at the beginning. Because I'm not cool enough for that. No, but... no, no. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll definitely be too big for you soon. Maybe Animal Cross, maybe Animal Talking After Dark. You know, we'll get, we'll come Ooh. back and get, you know, get a bit more, uh, get a bit more down to the nitty gritty. Uh, yeah, but, ASMR but, style. Oh, yeah. But in the meantime, I can't do that. Leah won't let me do it as much as I want to. I'm not allowed to do it. <laughs> So yeah, we do actually have plans for um, uh, comedy, comedy acts, uh, and for musical guests. So Mike Drucker, uh, a, a stand-up comedian and a good friend of mine, has, has said he's going to come on uh, and do a, a do a do a set. Uh, I'm going to try to get Nick Scarpino from Kind of Funny uh, to come on and do a set, and um, uh, uh, Raquel Lilly, a, a, a terrifically uh, talented singer-songwriter who's very popular on Twitch is going to be coming and joining us soon. And I'm hoping that some of my other musical guests, like Very Handsome Billy and the Dapper Rapper, uh, will also be joining us 
Um, and uh, I, I, if you're a fan of music uh, and or comedy, uh, I'm quite sure uh, you're going to like uh, what we have in store for you. Because we're sticking around. There's going to be more animal talking. We don't know when the next episode will be. Hopefully very soon. Um, I mean, we've done two now, two and two nights now. So I don't know when the next one will be. But it will really depend on... Um, I think if, I think if, 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 if the show has d- demonstrated anything tonight, it's that it's the, a, show, a, a, a show like this really does live and die on the quality of its guests. And, um, you know, they, they, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to hope to uh, make sure that we continue to have uh, interesting... Uh, uh, funny uh, people on the show. Uh, fortunately, I know a few of them, and uh, I think they are. Uh, they, if you, if you get this, if you understand why this is a, a cool thing, um, a fun thing, uh, then you're the you're the kind of people uh, that we want on the show. If you don't, then great. If you don't want to come on the show, then great. I don't want you on the fucking show. Fuck off. Um, I, I, uh, I I've got plenty of people uh, who are gonna. I, I've already got guests lined up for weeks, weeks based on the the number of uh, commitments I got from people saying they want to come on the show so stay stay tuned uh for some uh potentially very big very interesting names uh coming up on the show so uh once again i want to say thank you uh to um uh, my wife leah to her good friend tanya to uh adam our uh, band leader uh everyone really really helped contribute uh to uh, uh the show uh that you saw tonight and to the and to those uh that you're going to see uh in the future uh, and so uh, I'm going to ask everyone to gonna join me over here uh, in front of the desk. And um, uh, I can't get it down. You're standing in front of me. Oh my goodness! I'm sorry. Let me <laughs> let you move. Let me. Let me there, we got yeah. a, We got a bit. We, we do have. We do have a big finish uh, on behalf of uh, Adam and Leah uh, and Tanya and myself, Gary Witter, your host, the host of uh, Animal Talking. Uh, thanks uh, very much. Uh, for joining us and we hope very much to see you again soon.